Okay, the recording is on. Uh, welcome to the class today on church and uh, ministry administration. Thank you for connecting to the class. I think uh, the others will connect soon, hopefully. Uh, but let's just get uh, um, started. Uh, let's just uh, take a moment to pray and then we will start. Kiran, could you please pray for the class? Then we will start. Yes, sir. Father, we just we just say thank you, Father, for everything. Thanking mm. you, Father, for the class. And thanking you, Father, for the all the student, Father God. Father God, help us to understand the subject, Father God, and apply to your kingdom, Father God. Father God, give you more revelation and your wisdom and knowledge, Father God, to the situation, Father God. Father God, help us to move to your kingdom world. Thanking you, Father God, for everything. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Welcome to this class on church and ministry administration. We have been covering um, different topics that are useful uh, for us to know how to uh, basically run a Christian organization, whether it's a church organize, church type organization or some other Christ ministry. Uh, we've been just looking at various aspects. And uh, last week we focused on uh, uh, projects, on uh, managing, um, basically how we execute and coordinate projects. And so we talked about that, just gave us a little idea um, on how to do that and not necessarily a full uh, project management course or something, but uh, it's good for us to know, you know, what goes in there to run a project and many things that we do, whether it's a small thing like uh, planning for an event or a conference or a mission trip, or if we are planning something bigger, uh, you know, maybe you have several years of ministry in a certain area, we usually run it like projects. You know, there are certain things we look at uh, uh, to manage that area of ministry. So all the ministries and the things that happen within those ministries are typically uh, run as projects. This week, uh, we're kind of getting close to wrapping up this course. And so one of the final things I just want to make mention about is leveraging technology uh, in the administration of uh, the church or Christian ministry. Next, next semester, we will have a more in-depth course on media and technology in ministry. We will get into the media aspects and I, I will talk to you. We will learn about, uh, you know, different uh, aspects of the media, uh, you know, right from when you're doing a service or doing a live stream or uh, doing, a, a, you know, what are some of the things we, we need to know? Now, uh, of course, uh, these things will be handled by the technical people, people who are experts in this field. But as a pastor or as a Christian leader, it's good for you to have some awareness, some understanding of what actually goes in. Because uh, the thing, the, the fact of the matter is, even though you are a pastor, you're not a technical person, uh, the technical team would come back to you for approvals. You know, they would say, okay, should we do this? Should we not do this? Because they want to make sure that uh, whatever they are doing is aligned to the vision and the ministry of the church or, or, or the ministry that is aligned to the vision of the church or the ministry. So eventually the technical people, the media people, they're all going to come to you and say, you know, is this okay? Is this not okay? Now, of course, uh, uh, you, if, to, you know, well, as a pastor, you're not an expert uh, in that. Uh, I, I, you need to have some understanding what they're talking about. And uh, so uh, from that perspective, I think it's important for pastors, Christian leaders to have, especially in urban contexts, to have understanding of technology and so on. So we will get into that course next semester. But today, uh, what I just want to give us an idea of some of the things that we could use uh, from an administration point of view uh, when you want to 
you know, uh, manage uh, the church uh, or the Christian organization well. And I just, you know, just give you a demonstration to show you some of these things. And some of you who, you know, you, you may be familiar with uh, some of these things that we are using here at All People's Church. Now, uh, the, one of the things that we already mentioned uh, when we talked about finances is to use uh, accounting software. All right, uh, that's important. Uh, you know, uh, maybe in, when, when things are small, okay, we could manage things in an Excel sheet. Uh, but uh, thereafter, at some point, you know, when you get when you cross a hundred people or so, uh, you would definitely need to use an accounting software. And in India, we uh, one of the commonly used accounting software packages for uh, small organizations, businesses, and so on is uh, Tally. So uh, Tally uh, is the accounting software that you could purchase a license for and use it to maintain, manage your finances. Now, there are other aspects of the organization for which you can use software. And I'll just show you some of these things. Uh, one is for managing staff. Now, okay, let's, let's get to a, a little basic now. Uh, one is just for the work, the office work. Uh, we call it just office productivity. That means for the work that is being done in the office. That, of course, uh, many of us are familiar. We can use, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, if you want to use the commercial Microsoft products, you can use Word and Excel and PowerPoint and Outlook. So that's what many people are familiar with. And I so you use Word for writing your documents, PowerPoint for presentations, Excel sheets for your spreadsheets, calculations, charts, and so on. And then use Outlook as your email client. Now you have a, a, you know free versions. You can use the whole uh, Google suite of products, you know, Google Docs and spreadsheets and presentation and um, yeah, Gmail. You could use that. Uh, which is all free. Uh, so, uh, you know, there is both the commercial version and the free version, whichever. But I think it's important uh, for running a church or a Christian ministry that all the staff, you know, work digitally. You know, just working on paper and notebook, uh, you know, it's no longer... Uh, something that is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm using the word uh, something that is acceptable, uh, especially in an urban context. So encourage your staff and try to, try to get everybody on to using, you know, digital versions, uh, either Microsoft products or, go, you know, the free uh, Google suite of products that can be used for word processing, presentations, and so on. And of course, there are other open source uh, software available. Uh, there is also products from uh, Apple that could be used, whatever, whatever is comfortable, right? But that's one set of software uh, that uh, uh, the office productivity software that everybody should be using, every organization. And you, you need to say it has to happen this way. You know, you have to use Word and Excel and spreadsheets and uh, emails to for communication, documentation, presentation, so on. And you know, we get people to learn those things, so provide some training so that people can do it. And this way, you can even archive. You know, so you can be mostly digital, so you don't have to print paper and have notebooks and store files of you know things, documents. Everything, if it's done digitally, uh, saves us all of that. Uh, effort in space and so on, right? So try to, uh, you know, in, in the organization from the very beginning, try to be as much as possible, be digital. Things can be stored electronically, uh, uh, online or other places. So do that. So that's one part, the office productivity tools that we must be familiar with. And, and I would put all this in a simple one page document so that you have a reference of this, okay? The second thing is to manage information about people, right? You're basically a contact management. Now, for a church, that it becomes important 
when you need to manage the information of those people who are part of your congregation. You know, uh, uh, 10, 15 people you can manage, you know, maybe in a notebook or and nowadays on the phone also, we can just, you know, create your contact list and so on. But when it gets to several hundred people, to manage the contact, you know, to know their names, addresses, phone numbers, dates of birth, uh, wedding anniversaries, uh, birthdays, uh, you need to use some form of software. Uh, and so uh, that's one aspect. Or if you're a Christian organization, you may need to take care of uh, your uh, people who are your donors, people whom you want to reach out to, keep informed about uh, uh, your in your work. So you need to, again, manage contacts. So that is another aspect of software we need, which is contact management. Uh, so we will talk about that. Then uh, you need to manage your own staff. So, uh, you know, how will you manage people who are working for the church or working for the Christian organization, right? Uh, Christian ministry. Uh, what, do, what do we use for that? So here again, you need, um, you know, uh, human resource management software. So that's another software we need to talk about. And then there is, of course, the communication. You want to broadcast emails, messages, and so on. Uh, you need uh, uh, an email list manager that you can use to manage. And lastly, of course, you need a website by which you share information with your audience and so on. So the good thing is um, uh, a lot of these software products are available uh, as free and open source products uh, so that you don't have to pay money to license the software. They're available easily and um, you can uh, use them and you can customize them. So uh, of course you need some technical people to do it for you and uh, you can customize it, right? So what I'm going to do uh, is just show you some of these products that we've been using. Um, and um, uh, and I'll just mention, I put it down in the document so you could um, be aware of it. And uh, at some point, you can also, also make use of these um, products, right? So for, uh, let me just go ahead and, share my screen so for uh, managing so we uh, we use a um, uh, church management software so this is all running on these are all web based online um, this church management software and uh, it, it actually is a product that's called rock RMS, and I, I, will, I will give you, I'll show you, put it down in the document. So this uh, Rock RMS, uh, or church management software, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, helps us to manage all our uh, information. So we use the same software to manage uh, our congregation. We also have set this up as a portal for Bible college uh, and so on. I'll show that to you. Uh, but the same software, we're using it for different purposes, right? So you see, as soon as I log in, I can see who are, whose birthdays are today. So there's a student, APCBC means APC Bible College, Joash D'Souza, yes, that's his birthday today. Um, these are church people. These are the uh, anniversaries. Susan George, or Susan Husband, uh, uh, Krishna and Bhavana, their, their anniversary. So, so I could, you know, immediately wish them, I could send them a message. So these are the anniversaries, right? And um, so in this software, I can also, uh, you know, uh, so I can search for people. So if I want to find out somebody's name, you know, uh, I can just start typing here. And there's, okay, Ashish right here, so I can immediately go. I can get information about, you know, Ashish right here. He's, this is his, uh, you know, or whatever information. We have tags on these people. So, you know, he's a member, attends Central, uh, and so many things. Uh, and uh, that's his age. He's married 26 years. That's son, wife, daughter, 
uh, information. That's a home address, e mobile, email, so on, right? So, and th these are um, people who, you know, we can have, we can have track, we can post comments against them. So these are people who verify details and so on. And so there's a lot of things we can do here um, in this um, church management software, uh, which we are kind of uh, extending for our use. But for now, we use it to manage all our church people. And, uh, you know, we, we, we have uh, various reports that we could run. Uh, we, we know, okay, who are the people? Uh, we can get, you know, anniversaries, birthdays, congregation lists, uh, people in life, the life groups, or children, you know, so whatever we want, we can, we are also managing Mangalore uh, and uh, Bible College as well, and so on. So uh, we can do, you know, we can do a lot of uh, reports we can work with and uh, that we could use for our purposes. But uh, this is how we uh, manage church. And then we also have a Bible college integrated into this. Uh, this is uh, this is my view. So this is not something uh, students will see, but uh, you know, we can look at uh, uh, lists. We can you know, search for people. We will see the people who have applied uh, all of the Data is. So basically, we use this uh, we use this software uh, to manage uh, uh, the church, uh, to manage uh, Bible college students separately. We manage uh, uh, art congregation, Bible college students, so on. So this is our church management software, and uh, you know we use, like I mentioned here, we use it for different purposes. So for instance, uh, the same thing, we have um, uh, customized it for Bible College. It's the same software product. Um, we have customized, customized it for Bible College students and we haven't really launched it, work is going on. Uh, and this gives us data only about our, uh, um, uh, these, this number of students is not, uh, does not include um, the e-learning students, right? It's just, uh, as of now, it's only the online students and the homepage, oops, hello. Yeah, so we haven't completed this, but this is where, you know, we, we will be able to, students will be able to view um, their attendance and so on. Right? And uh, so, so this is a work, the same product, we're customizing it and uh, uh, students will be able to see their grades, register for courses, download their certificates, and so on. So these are things that's happening. The same product that's being customized for Bible College. And we use the same product for our COVID relief. So when we, uh, when we, uh, when we ran uh, our COVID relief project uh, and we got people to you know, send in requests we we had um, a, a huge number of requests uh, come in from across India, and all of that data went straight into this uh, management uh, software. And then from here, you know, uh, uh, people would uh, screen them, and uh, 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 and uh, you know, we could example. Um, Uh, of course, we could search for people. Let me just go directly to a list. Um, yeah, okay. So if I wanted to know who are the people who applied for pastor support, you know, I could filter by language. So we have, we were doing about 14 languages, I think. And we could filter by, by all of that. And then, you know, these are all the people who had written to us um, and, and then each one would be verified. And then we would, um, you know, either uh, um, uh, send them the support or for various reasons, they would be disregarded and so on. But this is how we managed uh, close to 8,000 requests and uh, uh, that came in. And then after that, uh, uh, we um, have, converted this project into uh, India Care. Uh, 
So we are continuing to, uh, so we did the COVID relief that is sending help to the people, but now we now continue to reach out to these people. I think uh, uh, the people who reached, uh, there are totally about 11,000 contacts because uh, that includes the people who were given as references, names, pastors were given us as references. And we are just, you know, the team is calling them, uh, continuing to care for them and help them spiritually. So we have converted the code relief into an India care project, but we're using the same software to manage all the data. So it's about 11,000 individuals whose data is being managed uh, through this uh, portal. So uh, this is just examples where the same product, uh, which is called Rock RMS, um, Uh, Rock RMS, uh, that is um, uh, relationship management software. Um, so it's a free church relationship or church management software which we are using. Uh, you can download this, and you know, and you can begin to customize it and use it. So this is what we are using, and we've customized it for our congregation to manage data for congregation. We customize it and use it to manage this COVID relief, uh, which now we're calling as India Care Project. We're also, we have also customized it and we are continuing to work on it uh, to, uh, to uh, for, for our Bible college use. So the same, you know, rock or RMS or church management software, you, you know, you can use it for different purposes. And we are continuing to customize it. Uh, you know, eventually we wanted to make it uh, a, a very useful portal for uh, our congregation, also for our Bible college. So that, that work is going on, but right now the team is uh, kind of busy on other things, but that's our eventual goal, right? So this is what we use to, when we say contact management or managing information about people, this is a useful product. Uh, the other thing that we use, um, to there is what I mentioned about staff management. That means for all the people who work with us. So we have full-time staff, and then we have people who work uh, from around the country uh, as consultants and doing work for us. Uh, uh, close to about uh, 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 30 plus people. Uh, and I'm not including the translators, you know, people who do translation of our books and all that. So if you include them as well, we probably have 40. 40 to 45 people who are in different parts of the country doing work for the for all people's church. Uh, so, you know, uh, we have uh, an office here. People are working in the office, but a lot of people are working from different places in India. Um, so what do we do? How do we manage uh, a lot of that? Uh, one of the things we have is we use this uh, HRM or uh, human resource management software, which is again an open source. It's um, uh, what we saw as an orange HRM. So uh, this, uh, uh, so all our pe all people are working for us, other than our translators. Uh, they use this, right? So they can. Uh, so uh, the, the, uh, you're seeing an admin view. So I, I, I have an administrative view on this. But uh, when they log in, they will see just you know certain parts of this product, uh, and uh, basically our staff and our consultants can uh, report their time, you know, so everybody reports the work that they are doing, right? So uh, uh, each one for every day, we enter our time, we're against various things, what we're doing uh, and, uh, and so on. So for every week, you know, you could every week, um, so that was my time sheet for last week. So for all the work we did every day, you report your hours, what you did, right? Uh, so like that, you know, every week people will be entering their time sheets, and then we have our we have our um, uh, human resource person, uh, our admin people who will um, I'll just go to the dashboard, who will review the time sheets, approve it, and so on. Uh, we also request, you know, we apply for leave here. So we manage, you know, uh, so this, this software automatically keeps track of uh, uh, the leaves that are taken, what are the leave that they, each staff is entitled to for that calendar year, so on, right? So this HRM is 
uh, a useful way for us to manage staff and uh, consultants, right? So this is this is a software. Again, we would recommend people, organizations using, right? So we we have a church management software that helps us manage contacts, people, and so on. Uh, then you have a human resource management software, HR HR software, that helps you manage your own staff and consultants. People are working for you. Uh, a lot of things happen. I, I, I'm not I'm not going into the details of all the things we do. I'm just you know in, in letting you know that uh, these are products that uh, that organ Christian organizations can use, and they're open source. Uh, whether it's you know a church or a Christian ministry, you can use it. Um, a third uh, piece of software which I would encourage churches to use, of course, is uh, a list email list software. And that means when you want to send out an email to people, uh, you know, how would you uh, send an email? Let's, you know, if you want to um, uh, send an email to, uh, say, for example, you know, 12,000 people or so, how would you send it? You know, how would you do that? You, know, you can't send it manually. So what do we do? We use a, a list manager. So uh, this is, again, a free open source software called PHP List. And uh, here you could uh, add all the email IDs. Of course, you add it not manually, but you could push all the email IDs into your, uh, into your your into the database. And you can also create subscriber lists. That means you could, you know, categorize them. So we have different, uh, you know, uh, groupings. Like uh, we can go by locations. These are pastors and ministers. These are outreach churches in the, or these are ministers around the world, Bible college, alumni, students. So, you know, you can create lots of different lists. And within that, there could be even further lists. So within categories, you know, we have uh, different lists of people, uh, groupings. Um, and so you can target your emails, right? So you can create new, as, many, as many lists as you want. And one person can belong to more than one list. And then when you want to run a campaign, that means you want to send, a, send an email, uh, you can choose, you know, which lists you want to send it to. So every week we send a little outline, I mean, a little email on what, what was a sermon about. So that's a campaign. So, uh, for example, for last Sunday sermon that went out uh, on the 26th, and uh, uh, it went out to about 12,000 people, 12,777 people, email IDs. Uh, so far now, about 1,366 have viewed the email. Right. And some have bounced. That means the email may not have been right or so. So, uh, you, you know, you can send out emails. Uh, this is a weekly sermon. Uh, we can, you know, we target emails, meaning if you want to send email only to our people in Bangalore, uh, we can send. Um, if you want to send it to other groupings. So, for example, this particular email, uh, somebody in Bangalore had passed away. So it was sent only to our APC Bangalore people. Now that was about 2,121 people. And uh, out of that, so many people viewed it. So you can target your email. So this this this, this email list manager is a very uh, useful uh, software for the church or the Christian organization to use, right? So we've looked at uh, three different kinds of software, the church management software, the human resource, man that is a people management, that is a staff and consultants, and then also an email list manager. These are three, uh, I would say, um, are simple but useful pieces of software that uh, any church or ministry can use um, for their work. Now, this is in addition to what we had already mentioned, uh, having an accounting software, uh, people in the office using their uh, the office productivity tools like uh, Word and uh, Excel and PowerPoint and email. Uh, so in addition to that, uh, these pieces of software are useful. And lastly, for all uh, churches and ministry 
ministries is important for you to have a website right so uh, and i think all of you know it but just just for completion sake so we have uh, our, our church website where you know we we do we have built it in such a way that's easy for people to come um, know what's going on you know especially for new people they want to know what is all people search about well they come in they can just scroll through the web you know the first page and they get a lot of information about who we are what are the resources available uh, you know, how do I connect to church from a first time visitor? I want to volunteer. I want to join a life group, right? And I need uh, member care assistance. I'm a member. I need some assistance. So you make that available. There's information about the church itself. Uh, what are the events that are happening? Of course, now it's mainly the church services. What are the ministries the church is involved in? Uh, what are the resources available? Um, now we have highlighted our books that are available in different languages. Uh, what are the mission trips, missionary missions, and uh, some of our other websites? And how do I contact either the office and so on, uh, other locations? So uh, having a website that you know is is kept up to date with relevant information uh, for your congregation or for new people is always uh, uh, is a useful thing and perhaps a necessary thing uh, in our world. Right, so uh, that's it. I think uh, I will just, um, you know, um, uh, uh, stop with that. Meaning, uh, this is uh, if we are, if an out church or organization is able to use this, these pieces of software, I think it's great. Um, now, of course, there's a lot more you can do. Like, for instance, we have uh, the Bible College and the e-learning portal. And uh, the other other things that people you know can do, uh, and we have, we have uh, specialized websites for different things like Chrysalis counseling or um, uh, uh, apologetics and other other sites that that work is going on, um, designed for other purposes. So there's a lot that we that a church or a ministry can do in leveraging technology. Uh, we will get into more details next semester in the media and technology course. Uh, but I just wanted to touch on some amount of uh, relevant software in the management and the organization of a church or Christian ministry, right? So I'll put this up in a one page document. I'll post it online uh, and you can just have it as a reference. And uh, in the future, you know, for your church, for your ministry, uh, and uh, like I mentioned, all of these are available available for free. Uh, so if you can just get the help of some IT people, some software developers, um, some people may even be able to volunteer their time. Uh, they can uh, set these things up for your church or for your Christian ministry, and uh, then you know you, you know it's it's so good to be able to use it uh, to serve people better. All right. Uh, now uh, there are a lot of um, uh, technical people, you know, people who love technology, who understand software developers and so on, who want to serve God, who want to do something for the kingdom. They want to use their skills. And, uh, you know, you could definitely uh, invite them to come and say, hey, can you use your skills and help us set up this church management software or this um, HR software or a website or uh, this email list software for us. And uh, most of them will be very happy to do it. They would, they may be able to volunteer their time, or in some cases, you may have may be able to hire uh, people, and uh, they will be able to help uh, with the work and the ministry. But as a leader or as a pastor, if you have some understanding of these things, and you can ask for the help that you need, get this thing set up, and it'll be uh, a wonderful uh, asset to the church and the ministry. Any questions? Any thoughts on this? Okay, so um, let's pause here for today and um, we will probably have one last class next. Uh, we will have a last class on Friday. Uh, I just want to wrap up with some, uh, uh, you know, concluding thoughts and just do a full review 
of the course, uh, what we've covered. And so we will do that coming up uh, the next class. Okay. Um, let's pray and then we will dismiss it. Out. Could you please pray and dismiss us? Thank you. Thank you for this day that given us, Lord. God bless all the students that have been doing this course a lot. Lord, we pray that as we learn, we will help us and guide us and lead us. And uh, also, Lord, as we finish our classes, I pray that we will be with us, Lord, to stay cool before us. And uh, let your blessings be upon us, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'll uh, connect with you on Friday again. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you.